and amazing families. Good morning. And thank you so much for joining us for another amazing story time with our wonderful holidays that we celebrate throughout December and we learn more about them. Now today, what does Miss Mel have around the room? We have Kanaras, which are wonderful, wonderful pieces which hold the candles for Kwanzaa. Now you say, what is Kwanzaa? In our story today, we are going to be learning, this is one of Miss Mel's absolutely favorite stories about Kwanzaa. I have so many that I love, which I'm going to be sharing with you after story time today. And it's called Little Rabbit's Kwanzaa. Christina loves the rabbits. <laughs> we love Kwanzaa and we love the rabbits in this story. Where we're going to learn more about Kwanzaa. Now, what do we know about our holidays? Holidays are such an important part of our lives, my loves. They connect us to family and our community. And in the African-American culture, Kwanzaa is a holiday that honors tradition and deepens children's understanding of their heritage. It's this beautiful, beautiful celebration of unity and ancestry. And it's also a lot of super fun. It's seven days of food, music, dancing, creativity, and each day is dedicated to a different principle of Kwanzaa. And there are seven principles of Kwanzaa. And in our story today, Little Rabbit's Kwanzaa, we are going to learn more about Kwanzaa. And it's by, it's written by Donna L. Washington. And it's also illustrated, and meaning the pictures are done by Shane W. Evans. And as Miss Mel said, this is one of Miss Mel's and Christina's favorite books on Kwanzaa. And there's so many beautiful ones. And in the back of our book today, Miss Mel wants to share this first before we start reading the story. There are the seven principles of Kwanzaa. And they're very beautiful. And Miss Mel's going to share them with you today because we are going to look at those seven principles and see them throughout our story today. And maybe you can see where you see these seven principles in our story today. So seven principles, important ones for Kwanzaa. Umoja, unity, which means unity. Kuji Chagulia is self-determination. Ujima is working together. Ujama is supporting each other in business. Nia is purpose, kuumba is creativity, and imani is faith. So those are our seven principles, my loves, and we're going to talk about our story today, and we want you to share your favorite, just like all of our holiday celebrations in December. We've had Christmas, Hanukkah, and now Kwanzaa. We want you to share all of your amazing ways you share those traditions with your families. So let's enjoy this story, Little Rabbit's Kwanzaa, and go on an adventure together and see how Little Rabbit, right, Christina? Little Rabbit helps his grandmom and helps join the community in unity of sharing the beautiful traditions of Kwanzaa. Let's check it out together. Okay, here we go. Little Rabbit was not having a very good Kwanzaa. Being the littlest rabbit in the family wasn't very easy for Little Rabbit. He couldn't remember all the names of all the days. He was allowed to light the candles of the Kinara, but his brothers and sisters made wonderful gifts to share. Little Rabbit was too embarrassed to share his gifts. He hated being the littlest, littlest rabbit. But he was little, but he was mighty. He was always in the way, and everyone told him he was too little to help. The only part of Kwanzaa that he really, truly loved was the big feast called Karamu. This year, he wasn't even going to have that. Oh, no. Grana Rabbit was a little ill. She was a little sick, and she was lying in bed all day drinking dandelion tea. And Mama Rabbit was so busy taking care of her, she didn't have time to cook this year. But Mama, if Grana Rabbit is sick, who will make the feast for Karamu? Little Rabbit asked his mother. Shame on you, Little Rabbit, his mama said. Grown up Rabbit is sick and all you can think about is your stomach. You go outside now and play, Mama Rabbit said. But Little Rabbit hopped out and sat on a big gnarled tree stump. He really wanted to go and talk to Grandma Rabbit because Grandma Rabbit was Little Rabbit's not only grandma but best friend. She was very, very wise, Grandma Rabbit was. Wasn't she, Christina? Mm-hmm. 
Little Rabbit sat and he thought and he thought and he thought about all the things his Grandma Rabbit said about Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa is a special time when we join together and help each other. That's what Grandma Rabbit said. That's it! Little Rabbit jumped up and danced around. Oh, bring Grandma Rabbit a treat for Karamu, the feast that will make her feel so much better. Little Rabbit hopped down the road. <laughs> Where are you going so fast, Mama Oriole said, and asked Little Rabbit really quickly as she sped along. I'm going to find a tasty tree for Grandma Rabbit. She's a little sick right now and she's tucked in bed and I want her to have a good caramu. And what does caramu mean? It is the feast of Kwanzaa. Little Rabbit hopped, hopped, hopped away. Mama Oriole didn't know what caramu was, but she knew Grana Rabbit. And Grana Rabbit always brought out warm seed cakes and warm pudding when the weather got cold. Poor Grana Rabbit, said Mama Oriole. I wish there was something I could do to help. Little Rabbit stopped by the side of the patch. He looked under some logs to see if he could find something special for Grana Rabbit. What are you doing, Little Rabbit? Asked Groundhog, sticking his head out of a patch of grass. He popped his head out of the patch of grass today. <gasps> I'm trying to find a zawadi for Grana Rabbit. Now that is another wonderful new word for us to learn today, zawadi. Zawadi means a gift or a present during Kwanzaa, zawadi. She's sick, I want her to feel better. So Little Rabbit hopped, 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 hopped away. Groundhog didn't know what a zawadi was, but he knew Grana Rabbit. Seems like Grana Rabbit had affected the lives in such a beautiful way of everyone around her community. She always had time to make her little toys for the animals and when they are bored. Poor Grana Rabbit, said Groundhog. I wish there was something I could do to help. Little Rabbit then hop, 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 hop to the pond. Can you hop with me? Hop, hop, hop. Maybe he could find something pretty for Grana Rabbit down at the pond with the frogs in the bog. What are you doing, little rabbit? asked the frogs. I'm looking for something pretty for Grana Rabbit. She's sick. She should have something pretty to hang on her wall for Kwanzaa. Little rabbit scratched an ear and hopped away. Can I scratch your ear, Christina? She loves good itches. <laughs> the frogs didn't know anything about Kwanzaa. But they knew Grana Rabbit. She could paint beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pictures and write wonderful poems. Poor Grana Rabbit, said the frogs. We need to find something to make Grana Rabbit. Now Little Rabbit hopped, hopped, hopped again through the woods and the field looking for berries. Where are you going, Little Rabbit? Mama Field Mouse asked. She was dragging all of her children right behind her. Grana Rabbit is sick, said Little Rabbit. I'm going to make sure she has a good caramu. Caramu is feast. I'm going to find as many berries as I can. Little Rabbit looked proud and happy as he hop, hop, hop through the meadows. Mama Field Mouse didn't know anything about caramu, but she knew Grana Rabbit. Grana Rabbit helped out with the children when Mama Field Mouse had her run her errands. Poor Grana Rabbit, said Come Field Mouse. I wish there was something I could do to help, said Mouse. Little Rabbit scampered through the trees. Good morning, Little Rabbit, said Papa Squirrel. Why are you sniffling around the trees? You look so sad. I'm looking for something to give Grana Rabbit. She said I want her to have a good caramel. Little Rabbit whipped away. Poor Squirrel, Papa Squirrel said. Poor Grana Rabbit didn't know anything about Squirrel didn't know anything about Kwanzaa, but he knew Grana Rabbit. She had always helped him gather nuts in the fall. Wasn't that very sweet of Grana Rabbit, helping her community? She even helped him remember where he hid them, because sometimes Papa Squirrel forgot where he hid them. Poor Grana Rabbit, said Papa Squirrel. I wish there was something I could do to help. Now Little Rabbit spent the whole day trying to find something to give to Grana Rabbit. He searched as long and far with all the forest friends as he could. I guess I'm too little to do anything. My loves, Miss Mel's going to tell you, you're never too little to do anything. 
You put your mind to it, you can do anything you set your mind to. I guess as the sun was setting, he hopped, hopped, hopped slowly home. When he opened the door, he had a big surprise. <gasps> what was his surprise? Everyone was there. Oh my goodness, there was Grana Rabbit sitting in her favorite chair. The frogs had brought wonderful flowers from the lily pads. Mama and Papa Spider hung them from the ceiling like lanterns. Mama Oriole was conducting a fine chorus of birds to sing for Grana Rabbit. Grandma brought little toys and gifts for everyone. Oh, Mama Field Mouse had gotten together with Mama Possum and Mama Raccoon to make a delicious feast. Their air was full of excitement and fun and friends and celebration. Mama Rabbit served the plates and Little Rabbit ate until he thought he would burst. <clears throat> what a beautiful, wonderful celebration. After that, Papa Rabbit told funny stories about Br'er Rabbit, Anasi, the spider, guinea fowl, and the mosquito. The stories made everyone laugh. And then Papa Spider plucked on the web strings. Cricket got out his fiddle, and all the animals had a wonderful dance and celebration. Oh my goodness, what a wonderful caramu. Grana Rabbit taught everyone a new word. And it's a new word we may be learning today too, my loves. Harambe. And Harambe, she called out, Harambe! Now, Harambe means synergy. It means sharing in unity with each other. It means sharing with each other the wonderfulness of each other. It means pulling together as a community. Let's pull together! We don't need anyone to tell us that, said Papa Squirrel. We already pulled together. Everyone laughed and shouted, Harambe! 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 We pull together as a community and work together. Something we need to learn from every day, my loves. When the caramel was over, the feast, Little Rabbit sat with his grana in the big chair. Why? Why are you so sad? Little Rabbit, his grana asked. Didn't you have a good time and a good caramel? Yes, Little Rabbit said quietly, but I wanted to do something special for, for you, Grana Rabbit. Oh, Grana Rabbit, as we know, was very, very wise. And so she just laughed, you silly Little Rabbit. She said, hugging Little Rabbit so, so tight. Oh, big hugs. And if you hadn't gone off looking for Karamu this morning, it never would have found its way here tonight, Grandma Rabbit said. <laughs> so wise. Little Rabbit frowned, but I'm the only one who didn't have anything to share with you. His Grandma smiled. You shared your dream, my love. And your dream brought all of our friends and neighbors together. That's a very big thing, my love. Little Rabbit felt proud. Wow, my dream did all that? Yes, Little Rabbit. I'm not surprised though, his grandma said. Why not, Little Rabbit? As she shared the Kinara with the seven principles of Kwanzaa. <gasps> because, Little Rabbit, my love, I have faith in you. If you have faith in yourself, Little Rabbit, there's always hope. A very important lesson, my loves, we have for every day. Oh, I'll try to remember that, said Little Rabbit. Ooh, yawning, because she was so tired from the adventures of the day. By the way, said Grandma Rabbit, snuggling him close. This was the best karamu. Oh, was that a wonderful story? <clears throat> Did we see many of the different ways the seven principles of Kwanzaa are celebrated in our story today? 
Let's look in the back of this book because remember in the beginning of our story, Miss Mel shared with you the seven principles. In the back of this book, the author beautifully puts the seven principles that are celebrated in Kwanzaa every December. <clears throat> And we'll go through them again and look at the examples from our story as well and how we found these seven principles within our story today. So the first day, Umoja, is unity. And in our story today, the animals join together to celebrate Karamu. That's how we found unity. Day two, Kuji Chagulia, is self-determination. And how we found that in our story today is when Little Rabbit began his search all on his own. He was very determined to find the best karamu and best wonderful zawadis, the presents for Grandma. Day three is Ujima, and that's working together. Now, we saw a lot of elements and examples of that in our story today. Mama Field Mouse, Mama Possum, and Mama Raccoon worked to make the best feats. The frogs and the spiders hung the lanterns. The spider and the cricket made music. And Wonderful Rabbit, that was another example, right, Christina and everyone? Wonderful Rabbit found a wonderful way to celebrate with everyone. Ujama supporting each other in business. Grana Rabbit helps Papa Squirrel hide his nuts and find them again in the spring. Grana Rabbit helps Mama Field Mouse with her children. We all support and help one another. Now day five, Nia, purpose, which means purpose. Little Rabbit left home with a purpose. He wanted to help his Grana Rabbit have a wonderful karamu or feast. Day six in our principles of Kwanzaa, Kuuma, creativity. <clears throat> the storytelling, dancing, music, painting, poetry, making zazawadi for the party and cooking are examples of creativity. And as we learned a new word today, zawadi are presents. Now, day seven is imani, and that is faith. And we found faith in our story today by Grana Rabbit has faith in Little Rabbit. To have faith in one each other lifts each other up. And that is a wonderful thing because it gives so many people self-confidence and support and joy, my loves. You can move mountains for someone when you have faith in them. And let's learn the other words we learned in our story today. So we saw some examples of the seven principles of Kwanzaa in our story today. And two of the new words, well, actually three of the new words we learned in Kwanzaa. Karamu, which is the feast of Kwanzaa. It happens the sixth night of Kwanzaa. So it happens on the sixth night. And Zawadi, presents you give at Kwanzaa, many of them are handmade. And as you saw in our story today, Groundhog brought handmade toys and gifts to Kaoramu. Now, Miss Nell's going to challenge you. Can you find some more examples of the seven principles of Kwanzaa in our story today? I know you can. There are a lot more of them. So I'm going to challenge you to do that. Now, remember, you can get this amazing book, Little Rabbit's Kwanzaa by Donna L. Washington and pictures are illustrated by Shane W. Evans through Delaware County Libraries through our curbside pickup. And you can also find some amazing Kwanzaa books through Hoopla Digital. And I'm going to recommend those two because we have quite a selection of Kwanzaa books on Hoopla Digital as well, as well as in our libraries for curbside pickup, my loves. So try those out. Now, Today we have our craft, my loves, and I know we're always excited about the craft, the wonderful STEM craft, during our fabulous story times, the end of each story time that we have. Now, our amazing craft today is going to be the Kwanzaa Wreath of Unity. And Miss Mel has three different colors uniting us in our Kwanzaa Kinara, which are green, red, and black. Now, you can make your Kwanzaa wreath out of these three colors. Now, Miss Nell has construction paper, but you can also use regular paper and color it the colors of Kwanzaa. So, today, you, on these pieces of paper, Miss Nell put her hand, and I traced my hand, which you can do with your hand too, my loves, and you're going to make seven wonderful handprints for Kwanzaa. Now, I'm going to show you, I'm going to take this wreath down, and I'm going to show you what Miss Mel did on the back. Now, to make this wreath really sturdy, Miss Mel took a piece of cardstock, but you don't have to use cardstock. Now, you are going to use scissors for this wonderful project, my loves. So, again, parental supervision when you use your scissors. 
And what you can do is take a cereal box or a cracker box, and you can use that cardboard, or if you get a package, in, if your parents get a package in the mail, you can cut out that cardboard too. But be careful before you do it. Do it with your parents, my loves, always because you might be using a really sharp instrument to cut this cardboard out. Now what you want to do is make a big circle and then make and cut another circle inside that circle. And that gives you the structure, the support for your wonderful Unity Kwanzaa wreath. Now as you can see, after you use your different colors of paper, the colors of Kwanzaa, we are going to use our hand, trace our hands onto these pages, and our parents will help us cut out our hands. And we are going to put our handprints all around this wonderful Kwanzaa wreath, unity wreath for Kwanzaa. And in our wonderful handprints, we are going to put the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Ujama, Nia, Kuumba, Imani, Umoja, Kuji Chagulia, Ujima, and then we also put in, this is an eighth one, Zawadi, which are the feast or the presence of Kwanzaa. So Ms. Mel put a, another wonderful word we learned today in our Kwanzaa celebration today. So this is our amazing Kwanzaa wreath. Now also in our links today, in our video today, you can check out now or you can check out later. We have several links for you to check out. There's a video and instructions on how to make your Kwanzaa wreath beyond the instructions Ms. Mel gave you. Now if you don't have construction paper, remember my loves, you can always use regular paper and color it the colors you need. So that is perfectly fine with colored pencils, markers, crayons. We can think out of the box and use a lot of different materials that we have around our house. Now also we have two more links besides our wreath link, our Unity wreath link. We have two more links with all different amazing crafts about Kwanzaa. We also have a wonderful link up in our video post today. We have a lot of links for you to share. Wonderful link in our video post today all about the celebration of Kwanzaa and some more information about it to share with your friends and family so we can learn more about Kwanzaa. We also have, Miss Bell has an amazing, amazing YouTube video on children talking about the seven principles of Kwanzaa and, and listing those seven principles of Kwanzaa and what they mean. So that is really awesome. So check that YouTube. It's a kid-friendly one. It takes a few sec, couple minutes. It's a beautiful, beautiful video. So check that out, my loves. This is our wonderful Unity Wreath. And if you have any of your crafts that you've had from this week to share in our holiday or last week to share, please share them in our comments of any of our Facebook posts with our videos, my loves. We want to see them. And if remember, if you have any wonderful traditions from the holidays of December that you share with your family, please give us ideas and list those for us because you not only share it with Christina and I, but you share it with all of our friends and family and all of our wonderful diverse community of Marple Public Library. So we want to enjoy sharing them with all our friends and family out there today and forever. So my loves, we have had so much fun, I cannot tell you, and so many fun times sharing last week and this week. We shared last week all the holidays and this week all the holidays that fall in December. And we've shared things about Christmas last week, and we shared this week about Hanukkah and Kwanzaa, and these are all holidays that fall in December. And they're wonderfully amazing and beautiful, diverse holidays. And I cannot tell you, I've had such a fun time sharing this with you because our diversity in our world makes our world amazing. And the more we learn about each other, the more amazing and strong our communities become. So my loves, I encourage you to embrace all the diversity of our world because it is truly makes the quilt an amazing beauty that our world celebrates every day and it makes us stronger with each other. So please, my love, I want to encourage you and always enjoy. And next week, we have, I'm going to first mention our story times we have next week. And next week, we have Monday's Once Upon a True Story Time. What? We're going to learn about Grandma Gatewood, 
who is an amazing lady who traveled the Appalachian Trail several times. We're going to learn about her and her amazing journey. So we are going to travel with Grandma Gatewood from our very own homes. And we are going to have amazing, she is a phenomenal woman. And she, we are going to learn more about her. And it, it's just a phenomenal story. We have to read about it. And next week, we are going to have, Tuesday and Wednesday, we are going to have snow stories. What? Snow and winter stories. They're going to be so much fun. They're going to be at 1030 in the morning on Tuesday and Wednesday. Tomorrow, my loves, what? We have the book and cook. Yes, I said it. Where we're going to make, I know, right? Are you fancy? <laughs> <laughs> Blow her by the book and cook, my loves, tomorrow. And tomorrow's book and cook is going to be all about a holiday tradition from my family to yours. And it is going to be an amazing two tasty treats that complement each other. It's going to be an amazing treat. And after book and cook, we're going to share Miss Mel's recipe books that I'm going to recommend to you to share with awesome recipes you can get through our Delaware County libraries and pick up for the curbside pickup. And we're going to share with you some other fun recipes you can do with your family during the holidays, as we always do after the book and cooks. So it's going to be super fun tomorrow, my loves. Enjoy watching it. And please, during after book and cooks, if you watch it, whenever you watch it, please put in our comments for book and cooks as well. Any family foods that you make during your holiday traditions that you absolutely love. So again, my loves, have a beautiful, wonderful day. And remember, after our story time today, Miss Mel always shares every Wednesday our picture book recommendations about our theme for the week. So we have a lot of amazing Hanukkah and Kwanzaa books that you can pick up through curbside pickup or get an amazing selection through Hoopla Digital. So it is going to be phenomenal. Check those books out, my loves. You're going to learn more because when we learn more about each other, we enrich our lives so much. So I encourage you to learn more. So enjoy, my loves. Have a great day. And Miss Mel, see you on tomorrow for Book and Cook. What? <laughs> Love you all.